thank you, everyone. Um, uh, it's very exciting to be here to give a talk. Uh, I'm Min Chiu, uh, uh, soft, uh, software engineer from Huawei Technologies uh, in Sinacara Company in California. I'm working on a big data project called Liwa, uh, which is to build up a highly scalable and high-performance big data system to deal with the interactive SQL query. We use uh, Apache Spark a lot in our software stack. So we spend a lot of time um, working on different components of Spark. For example, um, <coughs> we customize the scheduler and the storage in the Spark core. We also enhance the Spark SQL component, including the optimizer and the query planner. In today's talk, I will focus on only a small part of work we have done on Spark, which is enhancement on Spark SQL optimizer. Uh, our purpose is to share our experience on Spark with the community. And uh, we, I, I will give several questions we met during the development uh, in our company and uh, how can we come up with a solution. Here's the agenda of the, today's talk. First of all, I will give a quick review of the Catalyst framework. Uh, Spark SQL was built on top of it. Next, I will give a, a detailed description on two kinds of optimization we introduced to the Spark SQL optimizer. We call them RBO and CBO, which stands for rule-based optimization and cost-based optimization, respectively. Um, I will also uh, introduce some, uh, something we plan to implement in the near future and something we are currently working on. Um, we will end up in the talk with a Q&A. So let's start with the overview of the Catalyst framework. Uh, this is a very famous picture I captured from a Databricks engineering blog. <coughs> so uh, this picture clearly shows us the entire life cycle of a query processing in the Spark SQL. Uh, when a query comes in, either in the SQL statement or in the format of a data frame API call, it will go through the same code path, uh, including the parser to get a AST and analyzer to resolve the attributes to get rid of the ambiguity. The optimizer will try to generate an optimal uh, logical plan. Finally, the query plan will <coughs> apply a set of strategy on top of the optimal logical plan to generate a set of uh, equivalent physical plan. If we have the cost model, we will select the best one for the final execution. So uh, I will go into a little bit detail, deeper about the Spark SQL optimizer. The Spark SQL op optimizer is essentially defined as a rule executor. It executes a set of predefined rules. Each rule represents an individual optimization on the logical plan tree. Um, it makes the equivalent transformation on the logical plan tree. The purpose is to reduce the cost of computation and the data size as much as possible. For example, we have the constant folding rule, which is to simplify the expression, which contains the constant. And we also have the project push down and the filter push down, which is to uh, get rid of the unnecessary column and unnecessary rows at the very beginning of the query processing. So the optimizer will run the set of rules iteratively until a fixed point was reached. On that point, we will get an optimized query plan. The framework of an opti optimizer is well designed and easy, very easy to extend. Um, for example, if you want to in introduce some new optimization rule, you don't need to touch the existing code. The only thing you need to do is to write a new function, a new rule, and append the rule to the execution list of an optimizer. As, uh, as of today, the optimizer has been very smart and very strong, but uh, it cannot cover all the case. So in our development process, we see some problem the optimizer cannot deal with. Uh, so, so this is the reason we introduced the RBO. Uh, in our work, we uh, split the set of rules introduced by myself to uh, to, to two, two groups. Uh, the, the rule in the same group has the same functionality. 
The first group I call it join condition push down. This set of rule is used for the case where the join condition is existing in the join predicates. But however, for some reason, the join condition is not explicitly visible by the push down, uh, by the predicate push down rule. Um, the, so the, the rule in this group will try to expose the uh, join condition out of the join predicates. And uh, the second group is called data volume reduction, uh, try to reduce the unnecessary data involved in the computation. For the first group, we have two kind of rule. One is called predicate rewrite. The other one is join order adjustment. For the data volume reduction, I introduced an enhancement for the existing column pruning rule. Uh, before I go through the rule one by one, let's first of all uh, focus on uh, t the, the problem, the failing case where the join condition push down, and uh, why does it matter? Generally, when we cr create a query plan, we prefer to use the cheaper uh, join operator instead of expensive one. For example, uh, we can always prefer to use the harsh join or the sort match join instead of the expensive Cartesian product or nested loop. But in order to do that, we have to find a match join condition on the logical join node. If we cannot find the, the match join uh, condition, the strategy, the equal join select strategy will fail. As a result, the expensive Cartesian product will generate it. So, uh, <coughs> we have three cases. If either, any, any one of the three cases is met, we will trigger the, the push down failure. One is predicate is empty, is very straightforward, nothing. We, have, we don't have any condition at all. The second condition is that if the predicates cannot be split to small piece of conjunctives, the third case is that even though we can split the entire project predicates to small piece of conjunctions, but the attribute from the conjunction cannot match the relation from the join, the, the both sides of the join. So on the Left side, we have two kind of logical uh, join, logical join plan. Um, the R1 and R2 represents the join relation. Uh, relation. It might be a single table, or might be a subquery of a uh, nested uh, join. <coughs> so, if any one of the three uh, conditions is met, we will trigger the push down failure. As a result. Uh, in the physical plan, we can see the Cartesian product or Nestian loop join. So next, I will uh, introduce <coughs> the rules one by one. First one is predicate rewrite. Let's take a look at uh, this uh, example. This, in this example, the predicate is an uh, all expression, so that it cannot be split by the conjunctive, uh, conjunctives. So if we look at this, uh, look out of this things in each component of the disjunctive, there is a common condition called uh, part, part, part key from the part table and the part key from the line item table. Actually, the join condition has been there, but, for, but they are hidden in the disjunctive normal form. So the, the field push down. Uh, the, 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 the predicate push down rules cannot recognize this condition. As a result, uh, we can see very bad performance on this query. Uh, in order to uh, resolve this problem, we need to, uh, any time we saw the common expression in the disjunctive component, we will extract this component out of this all expression and apply an AND on top of it so that we can transfer this all expression to an AND expression. With this AND expression, the, the conjunctive split function can split the entire things to uh, conjunctives so that this 
and this, oh sorry, this uh, P part key and the L part key can be extracted and attached to the join node. Um, so after this optimization, we can say at the very beginning, without this optimization, the all expression is on top of the predicate, the filter, and the, the join cannot say any uh, condition at all. But after we do this with writer, the part key equal condition can be extracted and uh, attached to the join, uh, join node. There's another extra benefit for this uh, read writer because the L ship model and uh, the L ship struct also be extracted out of the all expression so that they can push down to the filter to uh, get rid of unnecessary row so that we can get an optimization a little bit further. Uh, finally, we find that we can see several times faster improvement with this optimization. Um, I have a quick update for this feature because um, when we uh, try, to, try to migrate our work for, from the, the older Spark version to Spark 1.5, we find that this issue has gone in Spark 1.5. And I did some investigation and find that there is a existing optimization rule in Spark SQL called Boolean simplification. This rule was enhanced by adding this uh, rewrite. So I think the credit should go to the contributor who made this com commit. Next one is the join order adjustment. We also uh, take a look at this uh, example. This is a three table join. And uh, if we take a, a, a look carefully at the where clause, looks like the, the predicate is represented by the conjunctive normal form. And each equal condition should match one of the table, right? So, but unfortunately, when we run this query, we still get a Cartesian product on one of the join, order, join node. Um, so we run out of memory in some case because of the prohibitive expensive Cartesian product. And uh, if we reduce the data size, we can avoid an OM exception, but unfortunately the query runs very slowly. So what's the reason? In the multiple join, the join order in the logical plan tree is the same as the order of the table show up in the SQL statement. So in this specific case, the order, the order is all nation and customers. So in the query plan tree, the order and the nation will be joined first, and then the intimate results will join the customer uh, next. But we can see the predicates highlighted by the red. If we split the predicates to conjunctives, the first line, the the, the attributes from the two sides, one is from the order table, the other one is from the custom table. So I think for the, for the top join, join node, this equal condition can match because on the left side, O is a subset of the output of the lower, lower join, order, join node. And the C customer key is a subset of the output of the customer Table. So this condition can attach to the join node. But unfortunately, in the second line, we can say the, the left side is from the custom table, but the right side is from the nation table. So this condition cannot be pushed down to the lower join, no, join node because the order table and the custom table belong to different uh, join relations, right? So in order to do that, we need to uh, group the join order based on the predicates. For this example, uh, we can use the first line, O and C, right? Based on this relation, we will try to group the O table and the O table and custom table together. And finally, order the nation table to get on the right side of the query plan. Um, after this optimization, we cannot, we cannot see the out of memory exception anymore, and the query runs several to tens of times faster. Um, there is a pull request for this feature, and uh, 
uh, one is by me and one is by uh, another engineer from Databricks. Uh, as of 1.5, uh, this feature has not been resolved yet, so let's see how can we go ahead about this uh, fix. Uh, the third one is called a column pruning enhancement. We also give an example. This table, uh, from this table we can see uh, we have three tables involved in this query and uh, the column ref referenced in this, qu in this query only, uh, uh, only three, three columns are referenced in the query. So we should say only, uh, we should say some uh, column be, uh, be pruned at the very beginning, but unfortunately we find that all the columns from the table are retrieved from the table scan and involved in the data shuffling. In a 100 gigabyte database, we observed several, a few hundred gigabytes data shuffling volume because all the, table, all the columns are, in, are, are involved in this computation. The reason is that uh, the current uh, column pruning rule to do the pattern match to insert the project in some place where we, we met this kind of pattern. For example, the aggregate, the generate, the project and, uh, with a join and uh, left semi-join. But in this specific case, we can see these are work clouds. So in a logical plan, we have a filter load between the project and uh, the join load. As a result, the current uh, column pruning rule cannot recognize this pattern. In order to resolve it, we add a, a pattern to the rule so the project can be inserted to the place where designed. Finally, uh, the three project has been inserted. We only retrieve the seven necessary column from the table. Um, we reduce the data shuffling volume by 90% and uh, the query run set, uh, six times faster. So next I will give a little bit uh, about uh, the CBO because as of, as of now, everything I introduced did not consider the database object. But in some cases, the information is very useful for us to plan the query plan. Um, the, the idea is that the more we know about the database object, the more likely we can push an optimizer to get a better query plan. Uh, the useful information including the number of rows at the tables, a table, table level, the mean max value, number of distinct value, number of non value at the column level. So based on that information, we can do the filter uh, factor estimation and to, to calculate the cardinality of the join, cardinality of group by, and uh, based on this cardinality, we can estimate the intermediate result size. So based on that size, we can guide our uh, the, the optimizer to, to do some adjustment to uh, take advantage of the stats to generate an optimal query plan. So in order to do that, we implement uh, the stats connection in the Spark SQL engine. Uh, sorry, the, in Spark execution engine and we store the stats in the Hive Meta Store because we run Hive on Spark in our product. And we also implemented the histogram to improve the estimation accuracy because without the histogram, we can only assume the distribution of the column data is even distributed. And we also implement a 2D histogram to estimate the, the filter with the uh, correlated columns. Without this one, we can only assume the two columns are independent, but in some cases not. Um, based on the estimation, we did several things. One is to dynamically determine the number of partition in the query plan. Um, we also not, we, we not only consider the size of the intermediate results, we also consider the computation resource, like uh, the number of cores in the CPU, which is available for the execu execution. And we also uh, determine the broadcast threshold, which is not, uh, which can over override the predefined uh, parameter. Um, we also select a joint type based on the cost estimation. 
prior, prior to 1.5, they are harsh join. But starting from 1.5, the harsh join has gone. So um, I think harsh join is a very nice feature because if the hash table can fit in the memory, it is generally run faster than the sort merge join. So with the uh, CBO estimation, if we can see the intermediate result can fit in the memory, uh, we will prefer to use the hash table. So I, 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 I propose to bring back the hash join in the future with this uh, cost-based uh, cost optimization. We also uh, adjust the multi-table join order. Previously, I mentioned the, the join order adjustment, but in that case, we did not consider the cost. So the common case is that we need to join the small table first, or join the two table with the small intermediate result first. But in the previous slides, maybe we, we will get a suboptimal query plan because we did not consider the underlying data distribution and the data size. So if we join the two large table first, we will get a very bad performance. But in that case, only avoid the Cartesian product. But in this case, in we, when we introduce the cost-based optimization, we can improve the performance further. So uh, in, before 1.5, we also uh, determine the build side because for the hash table, hash join, we always build a hash table on the small size of the table and do the hash probe on the big table. But since 1.5, we don't have the hash join at all, so we will remove that. In the future, if the hash join is come back, we can still reuse this feature. So we have some preliminary results. This is the hardware configuration. It's generally a PC server. And uh, in, our, uh, in our performance test, the preliminary results show up to five times speed up compared with without CBO optimization. Uh, In-house, we generally use the TPCH and the TPCDS benchmark, but we did not audit the results, so we call it a preliminary results. But we also saw some uh, regression in some small part of the join because, uh, as I said, we do the cost estimation, but for some reason, uh, for some specific case, we cannot get an accurate uh, estimation, so we did a wrong determination in the query plan. For example, we, uh, we, we make a wrong, uh, incorrect choice on the build side, or we determine our incorrect uh, number of partitions. So, but this is only small part of the query. Um, I think this result, uh, let us know that uh, it's very promising, and uh, I think we should be in the right direction. Um, something we plan to do in the future. Uh, two major things we plan to do. One is to enumerate the space of query plan, because right now, Spark SQL query planner only return the first one of the, the, the set of query plan. So the quality of the physical plan is totally depends on the order we apply in the strategy in the query planner. Uh, to enumerate the space of the query plans, we apply the cost model on each of the equivalent physical plan and to calculate the cost and to pick up the best one. And I think this one should be optimal compared with the current uh, Spark SQL query, pick up by the query planner. Mm. The other thing we need to do is to uh, try to improve the estimation accuracy of our cost model. Uh, some difficulty lies in the derived column, like the column with uh, expression, the column with the user-defined function. Um, one of the ideas is uh, to, to do some dynamic sampling during the runtime to uh, calculate the stats on the user-defined user-defined function columns. And uh, the other difficulty is that it's very hard to estimate the column with the string type. So this is the two things we plan to do in the future. Um, that's all. So um, thank you very much. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Min.
Uh, now we have about three minutes uh, of time for your question and answer. So if anyone has any questions, like raise your hand and I'll bring you a microphone. Is it possible, or if not, do you have any plans in the future to have the ability to give some hints to Spark SQL to choose some plan yeah, rather exactly. than using this planner or something? I think it's a good question. Uh, actually, in our uh, in-house development, we have already implemented a lot of hints. For example, if in the case we, we don't have an current estimation, we can use the hint to overwrite the, 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 the choice by the optimizer. We implement something like uh, the join side, the, the build side, and uh, the, um, we can also uh, split, uh, specify how many different, uh, how many distinct values in this column in the hint. And we also add the hint to implement the join order at all. Yeah. But at this moment, it's not included in this presentation. We have already implemented a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering if there's some uh, specific tuning you've done uh, when you use Hive over uh, Spark SQL. Uh, you mean, uh, do you mean the specific tuning on Hive? Yeah, yeah, when you use, use Hive over Spark SQL, is there any like tuning you did that you can share? Wait, 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 you're not tu what, what do you mean by the tuning? Like, uh, the, uh, like change some configuration or build, like things to, to improve the performance, basically. We did not change, uh, we did not do the performance tuning. Because when we do the performance comparison, we always run the query on the same environment. So um, for, the, for the Hive side, we did not configure, we did not change too much parameter. Wonderful. Well, if there are no more questions, let's give Mean one more round of applause.